Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Now Let's Review. We're gonna be reviewing the Urban Max C1 G Roar Urban Seated Scooter next on Now Let's Review. Quite a mouthful there, Zach. Uh, yeah, I mean, I looked up the official name. It's the G Roar C1 Folding Electric Scooter for Adults with Seat. And I think that's the problem with this is that um, it should have a better name. Like, look, a moped, quick name. Right? right? E bike, quick name. Mm. This, if I call it a scooter, you're going to think it's totally different. It's like a scooter, but it's got these big 12 inch tires and it's got a seat. Can I just say right off the top, I like it. I like it a lot. I do like this a lot too. I think that it, it, the nicest thing about electric mobility is that it has started to um, combine different things together in ways that are more affordable, cleaner, and uh, honestly more fun. Um, and this is a perfect example of that. This is a mix between a stand-up scooter that you might remember from just a few years ago with a moped. And it's it's a nice blend because it only costs, uh, how much does this cost? This costs $682.99 on their website. It is sold out as of the recording of this, um, and I can surprised. see why. Um, but for that price point, look, there's so many things to talk about here. First of all, you don't stand on it. You sit on it. You're seeing us riding it right now. So it's a sit-on scooter. What I like about it is that you're lower to the ground than a bike. And so it feels, for me at least, I don't know about you, it feels really safe because I can always put my feet on the ground. And not just the way that, you know, you go to like a bike shop and you, you get the bike and they adjust the seat for you and, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm up on my tippy toes. Um, you can actually plant your feet with your knees right. bent on this thing. And that feels really safe right. because you can basically just stand up and oh, ha, goodbye. <laughs> Let this thing rip out from underneath you. Worst comes to worse. Right. So, I mean, it changes the game in terms of feeling safe. And I think that um, those stand-up scooters, look, they're just not that stable. And anything you do wrong, we've heard of many people who have accidents on them. Um, so that's not great if you're worried about that. And then bikes, like you said, yeah, you're, you're kind of up high. So this solves a lot of problems. I, I would say, like, if you're looking for a solution, if you're on a campus or you're in an urban environment and you want to be able to go and get you know some shopping done or whatever, like, the range on this is great. So let's go through the stats and see if it might be a good fit for you. All right, so it's got a 265-pound rider load limit. That's the max weight you can put on it. That's including the rider and whatever you put in the back. Um, let's just talk about the back for a second. You got this cool basket, which is just a great all-round purpose basket. Basket. You're mm. seeing us throw some groceries in it here. So it's always there. You don't have to remember to bring it with you. I love that. It's got dual adjustable shock absorbers in the back, which is really nice because in the city, you're going to hit potholes and stuff. And so even though they're air-filled tires, which takes some of the, the shock, mm -hmm. this takes the rest and you can adjust them. So if you don't like the ride, if you want a little stiffer or whatever, just a simple crank adjustment here in the back. And the, uh, this is right above your seat, which means that you're getting a lot of the cushion there. Uh, there is no suspension on the front, which means that that is gonna be a little bit more bumpy, but um, it's going to be, this side's gonna be moving up and down while your butt stays relatively uh, comfortable and maybe your hands are gonna be joggled around, but that's about it. So it's got a 450 watt motor in the back. Um, some people have commented that it feels too wimpy. I felt like on most uh, straight surfaces it was fine. I think it would be a little bit wimpy if you're doing a lot of hills. Yeah, so maybe not a San Francisco scooter, but I think that for a lot of city environments, um, this is going to take you to where you need to go. And let's start to talk about uh, top speed on this guy. Yeah, so 18.6 miles an hour top speed. So if you're looking to crank through the city at 30 miles an hour, this is not for you. It is, like I said, more of a safe speed scooter. And if you're riding around people, anything above 10, 12 miles an hour begins to feel very fast to people who are walking at three miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's the nice part about uh, this. It has a throttle. If you'd lift up the back end, we can kind of show it off, you know, gets you going. And that was full throttle. Um, and as you notice there, it didn't take off. A lot of electric okay. scooters will go if you don't put any load on them. And that means that they're gonna be accelerating as fast as they possibly can. This has a built-in limiter, acceleration limiter. So that's another comfort feature. That means that it's not high performance, super fast, super fun. Um, this is not a thrill seeker. This is- Get I, you where you wanna go. <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious from just looking at it. Yeah. 
So it's got an adjustable height seat. And what I like about this is, yeah, go ahead and shut off. It's, yeah. it's easy to do uh, by yourself. So if you want to make a slight adjustment on the road, you don't need any tools. It can go pretty darn low. Exactly. So you can be really short or you can be really tall and ride this. Thing. Um, which, I mean, depends on your, your leg length and comfort level, but it's really nice for shorter riders because, you, you know, you can be this close to the ground, um, which means that your legs do not have to be very long, which means you might be younger. Yeah, the manufacturer says you can be as little as 12 years old and ride this. Um, and I think that that makes sense. And of course, it also goes pretty high. So if you are quite tall, um, you could have it all the way up there. I, I personally would want it somewhere in the middle, um, but that's great adjustability. And unlike a bike where even all the way down, if you set the seat, you're still gonna be, you know, several feet above the ground. Um, this is keeping you <laughs> nice and low, which again is great for safety. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the foldable aspect of this. You can fold down this front stem. And so that makes it, and if you lower this down, or even or take, remove, or it, remove yeah. it entirely. Uh, that means that you're probably gonna be able to fit this into a trunk of a big car, or at least in the back of an SUV. Yeah, I mean, if you pull this out and store this either on top or something like that, um, yeah, it, it, it really reduces the size. It's Now it's 39 and a half pounds, so it's not light, but it's not as heavy as many e-bikes. Yeah, it's, it's doable. I would say that if this is more of a mobility device for someone who is uh, maybe a little bit physically less active, um, it might be a bit of a challenge, but it wouldn't be a challenge for most other people around. So I think it's not going to be that difficult to be um, carried and lifted into either the trunk of a car or up a few steps into a house. So let's talk about range. Yeah, so it's got a 20 to 25 mile range. That's all done with the throttle up there. So there's no pedaling, obviously. It's got a 36 volt, 10 amp hour battery and the battery is right here. So it's not removable. Mm. And uh, if that's a bad thing for you, uh, I guess, you know, my one little con that I'll bring up later is uh, that you charge it right here on the deck. And I just feel like a deck is where things get wet and slushy and I don't know if that's the best place for it. Yeah, and not being able to remove the battery means that you're going to need to physically move this to wherever uh, the outlet is that you're gonna be charging this. And it's a five hour charge time from zero to 100. Which is not outside of the realm of most scooters. And I think, you know, 20 to 25 miles is fine because this, I don't think you're gonna want to ride this for miles and miles and miles. This to me would be like a four or five mile commute kind of scooter. Yeah, which means that you might be able to get uh, a couple days worth out of it. Right. And the other nice part about it is that there are plenty of spots to attach a bike lock that aren't mm. easily removed, yeah. <laughs> um, which I think is is nice and simple. Obviously you wouldn't want to do the front tire, but there's lots of these little loops here um, that you could install a bike lock. It's got an LCD uh, screen and on something like this, you really don't need it for much. It tells you your battery life, it tells you your speed, stuff like that. So yeah, that's fine. And I like that it's nice and small and kind of unobtrusive. You got a little bell there and it's got dual mechanical disc brakes. And um, because you're not going that fast, uh, that's not a problem. I was, you know, on a higher price thing, you might hope for hydraulic, but mechanical works fine in this case. It also has this nice bright headlight here. And the thing that I like about it is it's gonna grab your eye a lot better than a lot of other front headlights that are a small dot. Exactly, and it's got a rear tail light that you're gonna have to switch on and off manually. There's a little button here. Interesting, so it's not Although activated. you can turn it on to flash if you want. That's good, I mean, yeah, it's not connected to the brake at all, but it is something to have uh, visibility wise. I would definitely recommend if you wanna add some safety, our sponsor Lumos oh, makes yeah. really amazing helmets. Uh, this is not digital, this is, this is real. Um, this is an actual screen that they put on the back of this helmet and it has a nice bright headlight in the front. This is gonna increase your visibility, increase safety. Um, a lot of them have MIPS or MIPS, which is a uh, really increase in safety when we're talking about helmets. So I couldn't recommend them more enough. This is Lumos Helmets. You'll see our referral code down below. So as we wrap up here and we get to our pros and cons, I do want to point out that they do have plastic fenders, which is nice because it's going to keep uh, the back of your clothes from getting all covered with stuff. So my pros, I love that it feels safe when I'm riding it. I love the basket and I love being able to ride with other walkers. So if you're on a college campus and your buddy comes over and you want to just walk to your next class, but you're riding, um, it goes so slow that you can just kind of put along next to them and you don't feel it's like the same head height. It feels nice. Yeah. Compare that to a bike 
where, you know, what are you gonna ride a bike really slow? Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'll definitely be there after class, dude. Um, that's not gonna work uh, on a bike. This just fits so seamlessly into uh, a more urban environment where people are walking around. Um, nobody is, I don't think, gonna get mad at you for something like this, especially if you have any mobility problems whatsoever. Um, I think that this is a nice, thing. It's not too wide. It doesn't have more wheels than it needs. Um, it's just enough to get you around. I love that. Yeah, as we rode it around the city, I, no one seemed to be scared by it hmm. because I think it just it doesn't go that fast. It doesn't really surprise anybody. Um, and the price. $682, like that's what you'd pay for a kind of a normal commuter scooter. And this to me does more. To get into the cons category here, I mean, overall build quality is nothing to write home about, but nothing is horrible. No. Um, you get pretty decent componentry. Um, and again, with that price, I'm not going to be complaining about hardly any of the quality. Um, I will say though, the non-removable battery pack, that means that you're going to need to lift this 40 some odd a piece of machinery up some stairs to charge overnight, as opposed to just being able to pull out a battery, keeping this thing locked outside. I mean, we were pretty hard pressed to find more cons, but I guess one of them would be this charge port. Um, having it right on top of the deck like this just means that it, it might break, especially if this gets um, opened and then ripped off by your foot at some point, and then you get gunk in the charger port. Um, that might be maybe the biggest Achilles heel of this thing, but Foldability, the folding mechanism was nice. I have no other complaints about pretty much anything else. Yeah, the only th other thing to be aware of is because it's uh, pneumatic tires, you are gonna have to keep them filled, make sure they don't pop. If they do, you're probably gonna have to go to your local bike shop. The front wheel, easy to take off. It comes off without any tools. Rear wheel, that's gonna be tougher and that's why probably a bike shop would be involved. Um, overall, I love it. I think it's a great, great item, and uh, you're going to find me riding it along in city streets a lot. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Now Let's Review. Again, we love bringing you different e-mobility devices. I hope this one kind of falls into a category that you didn't even know existed, because uh, I, I just love it. Make sure that you comment down below if you have any questions. We'll try and get your answers to those things. And uh, let us know about items that you would like us to review because we can't—we don't know about everything. So you are our eyes and ears out there. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like button and we'll see you next time on Now Let's Review.